you know, uh, just so proud of them. You know, you know, we played well. Obviously, momentum and a lot of things slipped away there in the fourth quarter. Special teams kind of faltered a little bit. And for us to persevere, and we made a decision early that we, if, if you know, we scored, we're going for two. We're going for the win. Especially with the new rules the way they are, might as well go for the win right away. And but uh, you know, so many, so many gritty performances and plays. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. We didn't turn the ball over, right? And and what did we get four? I think. So I mean, you know, just those things. Uh, some big plays. Some guys stepping up. Trevor Cardell. You know, made some big catches. Uh, and of course, Jerry Casey there at the end. You, you see uh, Amari Pexton Hickson get in, and, and you know he does some things in his few carries. Obviously, Jalen Daniels. I mean, for a guy that's been, you know, you know, waiting on the, waiting in the wings, redshirting, kind of staying prepared, and that's the key to that whole thing. I think we talked about that for quite a while. Is is how much he had stayed locked into this thing, where a lot of guys. You know, and he's so young, and, he, and for him to have that type of maturity is really impressive. When you say you decided early to go for two if you scored, it's how early? Like right when overtime started? Or when did that yeah, happen? right at, right when the overtime started. Why was that? It was just... Well, with the way the overtime rules are, you, you have to go on offense first the next time, and you got to go for two. And then all of a sudden, then you get into that new rule one where you, all it is is two-point plays. and. So you're going to go for two eventually anyway, so you might as well, what's the difference now? And, you know, uh, back at the last job, we, you know, we went through a seven overtime game and, you know, that's not, uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, we're not, we're a young football team. We're not as deep uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're wearing down. And so you might as well just, uh, you know, stick with the momentum. Early part of the week you talked about the large, the 22 players on your team from this state, and what yeah. playing a team from this state means. And yeah, the celebration's great in there, <laughs> but for those guys, those 22 guys. Yeah, I, I would think of the majority of them, of course, you know, grew up wanting to be recruited by this school, and uh, you know, I, I would, I would imagine, no matter how much they played or didn't play, to, to come here is, is special. Uh, obviously, it's an outstanding. It's outstanding tradition, outstanding facility and resources and all those things. So you come in here as, you know, a, you know, we're David and they're Goliath and we, we go out there and play. And, uh, you know, that's been the one thing I, I think that I've really been impressed and we talked about a little bit at halftime was, you know, we played well against OU as well, but we didn't finish, okay, and, and as well as we liked. And that was a, a heartbreaker. For, so for us to battle this one, at this stage of the game being one and eight, it really says a lot about these young men that we have in the locker room right now. What can this do for you? Yeah, there's a, it's about them. Listen to them. I mean, they've been starving, and uh, you know, it's one win. It's you know, you know, you know, we got to build on it. You know, it, it, this will be a great 24, 48 hours, but but you have to keep working at it, and you know, either way, we, we're gonna. We, we got to get back to work and and see see if we can finish this thing even stronger. But you know we haven't beat a an FBS football team in this program here for for a couple of years, and it's been a while. And 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 to have some success here, we've we've got to we're coming back to this state next week, and we've got to be ready to play. What's going through your mind before that last play? I don't <laughs> I mean before the two point play. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, couldn't even tell you. To be honest, I was, I was kind of looking when the 25, when the when the play clock operator reset the play clock, before I even called the timeout. I was kind of joke. I was like, but that first, I was still trying to figure that part out. And then, let's just see where this goes. It's either um, our athletic director Travis Goff. I kind of gave him a look that said, hey, we're going to go for this thing, and you know. And, like I said early in the in the early in the series, I said, Andy, we're going for two. If we you know we score, we're gonna we're gonna win it here. He goes, I got one, and uh, so. Last the last two games, less than a hundred rushing yards for the game. This time, more than two hundred. How much did that open up? Just kind of the flow of the offense. Well, again, you, you watch that first half, and you know it, it makes you feel good offensively in so many ways because there's balance and you're doing things. I'm running and throwing and, and you can see it you know schematically we you know there's 
there's a plan there. There's thought, you know, and it, but when you can get going, then then you go late in the game and you're trying to run clock and do things, and it's three and out, and all of a sudden it looks pretty muddy and a little ugly. And but at the beginning of the game, you see when you start mixing some things and and doing it's it's fun to watch and it's fun to see us in sync and gain confidence as we go along. Yeah, that's a good question. I was like, you know, I think it was going to be a, it was going to be the outside two receivers, and it's like we're trying to get out there, and uh, so yeah, and then but they got pressure on the outside, yeah. So it was going to be a pass. Uh, yeah, yeah. I said Jared's just in there because Mason's hurt, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I told Jared that uh, um, we've been underutilizing him all year. So, and since the pay caller is his position coach, that'll be something I'm sure he'll address right away on Monday that he needs more touches. I heard out there my point spread is the biggest upset in Big 12 history. I mean, uh, what, 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 do you, what, what do you think that your guys did to, to make that possible? Played hard. You know, we, we talk about, you know, you know, you have two programs that are struggling a little bit. Um, we, we talked about it last night at the hotel about, you know, our, we've talked a lot about effort and straining, and, and then we talk about pride and passion and things of that nature. And I said, you know, one thing, no matter whatever happens, nobody ever wants to have their work ethic questioned, okay, and how bad they want to go about something. That's something you take with you in life. So I said, you know, when you go about it, you know, you know, no matter what, and we've been talking that way even when the scores were ugly at halftime. You know, we're going to go out and play hard, and no one's going to question about, you know, how we're going about it. That, that's what they can't take away from us, and I think they embrace it and start to understand if just keep pounding away at things, things will happen. What about Jalen today? <laughs> Outstanding. I, I mean, amazing. To, to play this well after not really getting many reps, to come in with the energy and, you know, and not just the last play. I, I mean, the, the first half. I'm kind of glancing here statistically, 21 for 30. I mean, that's amazing for that. And he was accurate. And, you know, even the, the one that got tipped by the linebacker in the, I think in the third quarter, you know, he just got a little impatient. He could have waited for the second window open. But, uh, again, uh, I thought he was he was outstanding. And, and the other thing, if you really watch, was, you know, he doesn't get rattled. He had great command of the play clock when we wanted him to, and let clock run down. Um, stood out there with poise, and, and you know. So, again, uh, for our first time really working with him, other than last week in the second, you know, when he got forced in, it was it was impressive. Anything else for coach? Were you happiest for anybody when you were walking back? I'm in? sorry. Were you happiest for anybody when you're happiest sort of, for, any... for anybody in your locker room and stuck it out? Or... Oh yeah, you know, I mean, if I miss guys, it's not fair. You know, you, you look at Kwame last year. You know, Kyron Johnson just keeps battling and battling. But I mean, you could go any of those super seniors to that anybody that's been in this program. You know, uh, you know. Uh, you know, Kenny Logan's been one that's been here for a little bit, but you know, Kenny's like, you know, one after one game, he said, you know how, you know, it's, you know it's, losing's hard, it's frustrating. And I, and I told him I was frustrated too. He goes, but coach, you only been here one year, so you know, there's only, you know, those guys have those things, and and uh, I'm really happy for everyone. And, and like I said, I'm happy for our fans. I'm happy for them because in my short time, I know there's a lot of people that that care a lot about this program. And there's a locker room full of guys that really care about each other. <laughs> yeah, he's played some special teams a little bit here and there. But now that uh, you know, when we lost, we lost Spencer Rowe for the season in last Thursday's practice, and uh, so he's been kind of stepped up into that role from there. And other than special teams, so yeah. So not only that, when you have a walk-on step up, make a catch like that, and it's. You know, pretty neat deal.